Hey everybody, welcome back to The Hunt. Um, we're still with Shelly Zimmerman, the former chief of police for San Diego. Um, I will say the first woman chief of police for the city of San Diego. Yeah? Yes. Amazing. So I just think it's so cool. <laughs> I'm just, I love your career. I love your story. I love um, just your your mindset and the way that you think. So, all right, so let's go back. So you were uh, on patrol and a detective, and then you went into being a sergeant before becoming chief of police. Oh, yeah, you okay. know, so you so have a progression a of, yeah. of promotion. So <laughs> yes. sergeant, then it goes to okay. lieutenant, lieutenant to captain, yeah. captain yeah. to assistant chief, and assistant chief to chief of police. And I'll tell and you is that, you know, obviously it was a great honor, yeah. but I stood on the shoulders of many who came before me, and I'm very grateful You're for You're always them. so humble, Shelly. So good. But, but it's true, you know, no one accomplishes anything by themselves. And when you, were, when you were a detective, did you have that career plan kind of built out? Did you know the roadmap or were you just moving, you know, as, as life came at you, you were taking opportunities and people saw potential in you? Well, and, and that's pretty much what happened. I had, you know, my, my goal was to be the best officer, the best detective yeah. that I could be in whatever assignment that I had. And I'd been on maybe 14 years and back working undercover narcotics at the time. And a lieutenant of the narcotics division came up to me and said, look, you know, the, you have been eligible to take the sergeant's test for many years. You have not taken it. You need to take it. And wow. I pretty much, again, pushed back. But he, he did convince me. To what take was the your test. trepidation? I just loved what I was doing. Oh. I just, you know, my favorite assignment has always been the assignment that I had at the time, and Love I it. thought this is this is great. Here I'm working back undercover, I believe making our city safer. And um, but you know what he d said to convince me was so true, and that was he said, you know, when I see you look and talk with other officers, you you take them under your wing and you yeah. help teach them how to you know, work a surveillance or to work undercover or to write a search yeah, warrant. you're a natural leader or a natural teacher. But I enjoyed that and, yeah. and, and I very much enjoyed that and I started thinking about that and he said, look how much more influence that you can have. You become a sergeant, you'll have a squad of officers and you could show them, you know, how we do it here with community policing and everything else. And I took the test, next thing, I had the interview, next thing you know, I'm a sergeant with a squad of officers back working patrol. Amazing. So. Let's just fast forward to where we are now, and there's been, you know, a lot in the news um, just around, you know, diversity and inclusion, and you know, the Me Too movement, and all those kinds of things. Um, I subscribe to the thinking that the right person for the job should get the job, regardless of all these other factors. Um, what was it like for you being a woman in, you know, the police force? You know, and I get asked this question quite a bit, uh, and I will tell you is that, you know, I'm very proud to say that. Uh, and I realize in uh, prefaces that maybe not everybody had my same experience, but uh, very welcoming. It, it, you know, the, with the philosophy, mm -hmm. the San Diego Police Department has always been very progressive with the philosophy of if you can do the job, you get to do the job. And, you know, we, we've had any job is open to anyone on our department, you know, male, female, uh, you know, any, any. Yeah kind of demographic, you know, sure. tall, short, yeah. you know, yeah, you, you exactly. name it. Yeah. Uh, if you can do the job, you get to do the job. So you didn't, you didn't have to deal with any of those kind of cultural issues or anything um, growing up? You know, the department, the, the many assignments that I mm -hmm. had, I was welcome in those assignments, you know. I just That's tried awesome. to do the best job that I could in the uh, assignment I had at the time, and I say that things just kind of fell into place. That's amazing. So. Um, from a leadership perspective, I mean, I know you've done so much for this city, and I think even other cities around the country um, look to um, some of the things when you did, um, you know, when you were in office, um, if you will, to improve the quality um, of life um, for for those who live here, the safety. Um, can we talk a little bit about that and sure. um, some of the things that you're most proud of? Sure. You know, there's so many things, and I will tell you is when I became chief of police. Uh, certainly was quite quite the honor and I put a sign on my desk that said this it said bad news welcome here and I believe <laughs> as a leader of an organization okay. could be chief of police or any organization that you need to create a culture where your employees feel comfortable to tell you things that may not be working the way they should or how to improve and you know what was a best practice years ago 
It's likely not today, and what is mm -hmm. regarded as a best practice today is likely not going to be years from now. And so to create that culture of inclusiveness, because I will tell you, as far as I'm concerned, your most important resource, resource is your personnel. And oh, you, know, right. you have to treat them right. You have to get them uh, to understand what the big picture is and to have that open door policy where those uh, feel comfortable who work mm -hmm. for you to come forward. I would tell you some phenomenal ideas came forward and which just makes us all that much better to be a, a better version of ourselves. Absolutely. I mean, I'm just thinking about it from even a business perspective. It's like if you're serving your personnel, your employees, then they're going to do a better sure. job, be more engaged, more productive. Um, so, I mean, it's such great um, thinking, I think, to have, especially in an environment, you know, like that. It's servant um, leadership. It's servant yeah. leadership, yeah. absolutely, sure. hands down. So, um, the body cameras, right. were you one of the first to put those into action? We were. The San Diego Police Department, at the time, that we deployed our, our body cameras, that we were the largest city and department at the time to deploy mm -hmm. them. You know, many other departments now have their bigger cities, bigger police departments have surpassed the yeah. San Diego Police Department, but at the time uh, we were, and I will tell you is that, that I believe that that was a very positive thing, uh, you know, body cameras. Um, you know, the vast, vast, vast majority of police officers every day go out there and mm -hmm. serve with honor. Uh, courage, distinction, yes. ethics, integrity, and you know that body camera. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, and that body camera has shown that has shown you know the positive work that police officers do. So was everybody an advocate for that, um, or did you have to fight for it? And and when do you turn them on? When do you turn them off? How does that work? Well, and I'll tell you, you know, there was some pushback, of course. You know, <laughs> always, it was, there's always one. Yeah, right? there, yeah. Not everybody was an advocate <laughs> yeah. for it, both inside and, and outside mm -hmm. of my uh, of the department at the time. But I would tell you is that the officers that were, I would say, the biggest critics of the body cameras be, did become the biggest advocate the first time a complaint came in. And that body camera showed that they did the right thing. Mm -hmm. And it was for the right reasons. And so, again, so that's... It was protecting them as much as it Sure. Was and, you know, I used to say that it, it not only protects the officers, mm -hmm. but it protects the community also. You know, the... As I said, the vast majority of the officers are going to do the right thing. Yeah. And for those very few that don't, we want to know that too. Absolutely. And what a great yeah. also training tool it is, you know, so you could go back and you could take a look at it, you know, what went well, what, you know, what maybe we could have done better. Uh, so there's so much to these body cameras and, and now that you see that it's pretty commonplace across the policing profession. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine um, there's just so many best practices to share across cities and you take the best of the best, you're keeping up with technology, anything to keep sure. the city safe. I almost. still, yeah, I still yeah. get calls from, in, you know, other yeah. um, chiefs across the country uh, yeah. and, and other, uh, our country, but other countries too, saying, how did you do this? And, and I will mm -hmm. say that when we brought together uh, many stakeholders, our first policy had about a 95% agreement. Now think about this. Yep. You can't get a 95% agreement with your best friend <laughs> on where you're going to dinner. And yet we True did story. it with a body camera policy. So it just goes to show that if you find that common ground, mm -hmm. okay, it's common yeah. sense that you can move forward together. Unbelievable. I mean, so many great stories. We have just about a minute left, Shelley. Um, what is next for, for you? I know that, you know, you're a sought-out speaker and you're, you know, you get asked to do these things all the time. So what's next? Uh, you know, involved in a lot of things. I'm very proud to uh, be working at National University. Uh, I so? do a lot of guest lecturing for them uh, on their public safety and leadership curriculum. Uh, you know, do a lot of, quite a bit of writing, a lot of speaking, a lot of consulting. Uh, and I'll tell you, I think I'm the, the luckiest person in the entire world. So if somebody's interested in reaching out to you, where can they find you? It has to do with, you know, something that's speaking, uh, yeah. a class speaking, or something like yeah. this at National University at S. Zimmerman. S. Zimmerman yeah. at National. Okay, at great. NU.edu. Fantastic. Okay, we just have a little bit of time. What's the drums, the, the, the drumming <laughs> story? Can you do that real quick? Uh, okay, so um, I play a few instruments, okay. none of them well, actually quite <laughs> frankly all of them terrible, uh -huh. but, uh, but drums is one of the instruments and I would get asked kind of as a joke as I would show up to these different events, community events or, or fundraising events and someone would say, hey chief, you know what, if you go and, and play some drums, not knowing that I could play a little bit, 
maybe we could raise some money. And I went, sure, I'll be happy to do it. And next thing you know, I'm out there playing with the band and we're raising money. So come on, kind of fun. And is it, is it like, are you, can we watch you at any time do this? <laughs> like, I mean, because there's so many local bands even around San Diego. As I, I know said, one band in particular good. that's playing um, this weekend. <laughs> you know, I don't know if that's an option for you to come up on stage. <laughs> I don't know. On occasion, I've been known to get up there and play conga drums or or, or mean uh, cowbell, I'll tell you that. Oh my goodness, absolutely yeah. unbelievable. Shelly, thank you so much. I hope you come back um, sure, and see us to. again. Um, can't wait just to see what you're up to next. You've had such a phenomenal career and I love following you and um, watching you lead and um, taking best practices as well. So thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. All right, you guys, you've been watching Shelly Zimmerman, the former uh, chief of police um, for San Diego. And uh, we'll be back in a minute. Stay tuned.